Hey guys, I'm Nick. Today I'm going to talk to you about catching live bait off the beach. If you can hear some background noise, that's because the 3D printer's over there printing something crazy. It's going to take like 19 hours. All right, that's a different story. But we're going to cover how to catch live bait off the beach uh, from the kayak. It's very, very easy to do. Uh, there are other ways to do it, but this is the most efficient way that I've ever found. Uh, and it involves using a sabiki rig, right? So this is a little sabiki rig. Uh, Hayabusa makes this one. Uh, it's definitely one of the mo more expensive versions of the Speaky Rig, but you guys can probably see there's a bunch of shine in there on those little little hooks, and that's super important. They also hold up better. They don't rust as quick as the cheaper ones. A lot of times I can use this for two or three days if I'm going offshore consecutively, you know, three days in a row. It'll last all three days, unless we run into Spanish mackerel, and then in that case, it's completely gone. You got time a new one. So knowing that, make sure you bring extras off the beach. Um, to use that, we take a sabiki rod. Now this is a this is a sabiki rod. I've had it for like four or five years. It's got an old, you know, Abu Garcia ambassador on there. Uh, it's corroded. It's uh, it's been around. Spent a lot of time off the beach. Does a fantastic job. And all this is is it's a tube. Okay, you're not gonna be able to see the whole thing, which is a tube. Uh, comes down to a little plastic piece right here. Um, and your line's going to go through there in the tube. That way, when you reel the sabiki in, the sabiki is actually going to go in here. And it's not going to stick to anything. Uh, if you're doing this with a spinning reel, it'll get the job done. But this guy allows you to hide, you know, this five and a half foot piece of, you know, crazy hook contraption inside here. It's going to stop you from getting hooked. It's going to stop you from hooking your clothes and everything else on the kayak. Now, um, all I have on here is some 20 pound mono. Uh, you're not trying to catch anything big. You're just catching some cigar minnows, right? So this mono has been on here for like four years. All right. So it's old. Nothing about this is brand new. It's definitely, definitely got its money's worth. That is for sure. Um, now, some people will say the rods are expensive. Things about 80 bucks for this rod. I'll put a link below. <clears throat> I make it in a, this is a universal version. So you can put a spinning reel or a bait casting reel here. I prefer to use the bait caster. Uh, it's just a preference of mine. Uh, either way, it will do the job. But if you have an old reel laying around, I don't think you need to go out and buy anything new. This thing clicks, doesn't always engage. I gotta use my thumb to pop the thing up. Nothing special, all right? But it does a fantastic job. So obviously the first step is taking this guy out of the package, which sometimes can be a little crazy. I'll tell you this, this is silly, but the cheaper versions actually are harder to get off of here. They're not always wrapped as well. Um, so we just take that first swivel, the swivel without the clip. A lot of times the bag is labeled, so it'll say uh, sinker side, rod side. Keep that in mind. Uh, we're just gonna take this, just tie a little quick little clinch knot right here. Once again, it's 20 pound mono and you're trying to reel in a three or four inch bait fish. So it's not too important. You will hook into some bigger hard tails and stuff like that, which make fantastic bait. Uh, but trust me, you have enough. It's a a four ounce fish you know you're gonna be okay when it comes to power so now you're just gonna unroll this doesn't matter which side you start on just be mindful that these little things will definitely catch your clothes and hang out but now you can see each one of those little drop rigs nothing special to it uh, then you're gonna take a sinker um, i prefer to use three or four ounce sinkers a pyramid weight this one is uh, three ounces uh, and the reason is you just never know when you're gonna need to drop this thing in oops, sorry, in 60 feet of water or something like that it happens okay where you know maybe you didn't do too good job catching bait maybe you're over i caught myself see this is why it's important to have a zabiki rod boom caught my flip-flop but you never know when you need to drop this bait in 60 70 feet of water say you went out to the snapper spot you ran out of cut bait you ran out of live bait there's a bunch of little grunts and all kinds of stuff down on the bottom so if you have this big pier bait in there, you can just drop right to the bottom, boom, catch some live bait on the spot. A lot of times there's squirrel fish down there, all kinds of other stuff that make for great bait. Uh, and then you can just reel that stuff up and go to town. All right, so that's clipped on it like that. I caught myself again. I don't usually do this sitting down, so that's not supposed to happen. Um, then you just take that thing, you just reel it up inside. Uh oh, uh oh. You just reel it up inside of there, and now, let's see if I can show you. Maybe you can see it. It's inside there completely. Here's the pyramid weight, it'll just sit like that. Obviously, I keep it vertical in my rod holder on the kayak, like so. 
Uh, I'm just going to wobble back and forth a little bit. It's just part of it. It's a pretty heavy item. <coughs> Excuse me. But it does a fantastic job. Nothing special to it. Then you just push the button. You drop it out. It'll take off. See, it's a little stuck up right now, okay? The reel is not new. But it does a fantastic job. You give it a little bounce. It'll take off. Boom. You are good to go. Nothing to it. This is how I catch my live bait. Now, there are other ways to do it. People use like a pool noodle and they wrap their sabiki around there. Um, yeah, that works. Uh, not the most efficient way in my opinion. However, it will get the job done. This is gonna cost you a little more money initially, but I haven't spent any money or time on this thing in four years and we catch live bait every day without any issues. Um, I will tell you, we already talked about these being a little more expensive. They're about four bucks a piece. Now, <coughs> Four bucks to catch live bait is probably worth it in my in my experiences, um, especially if there isn't any uh, frozen bait to be bought in the town. Like right now, you're going to have a hard time sourcing cigar minnows frozen anyways. There's, for some reason, there's a shortage, but you get these guys and you're good to go. You can always catch live bait, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions about the Sabiki rod or the Sabiki setup, just shoot me a comment down below and I will do the best to answer that question. Um, the next video is going to come out. It's going to be about how to keep your live bait alive once you catch it. I look forward to seeing your guys' questions. Uh, there will be a link below to submit your question. You can go to our website and actually submit a question and I will answer your question directly right here. Just like this. Um, as always, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and I look forward to you booking your next adventure.